Hi everyone, welcome to another video. Today I would like to start a video series about HomeLab. So you might have heard about HomeLab or maybe you already have one. HomeLab is just a way of experimenting with software, with hardware, uh, just having your own uh, little server somewhere uh, in the cupboard or under your desk running your home lab. However, to start your own home lab journey, you don't need an actual server, you don't need to invest in anything. You can use your own computer and take advantage of various virtualization options that are available to start your home labbing. So today we are going to focus on one of such options. In my opinion, uh, very flexible and uh, quite promising called Incus. Uh, if you're not familiar, Incos is a successor of a project called LXD, uh, which was originally created by Canonical, creators of Ubuntu. The project uh, has been closed sourced after a while and the community and creators or maintainers of LXD splintered off and created their own project called Incos. Um, it is a virtualization project, but what is quite unique about it is that it supports not only virtual machines or not predominantly virtual machines, but containers, uh, kind of like Docker, but not exactly. Um, we will look at it a little bit later. However, this video is not an Incus introduction. You can read documentation. There's plenty of other videos. I will link some of them where you can learn more about Incus. We are going to focus on a specific task. So for this video, we are going to set up Incas real quick. Again, I'm going to send you to documentation and we're going to focus on installing a VM and setting up Docker on our VM, and then accessing this Docker uh, host remotely uh, from our client. So this will be a specific task, one thing you can do uh, on the VM. And I will continue the series in this, um, in this uh, manner of creating various hopefully useful tasks that you can do with virtualization. So why use HomeLab? As I mentioned earlier, it's a really nice way of experimenting, of learning. If you are um, keen on learning Linux or servers, I believe this is the best way to just expose yourself to all the pain that uh, administrators go through uh, worldwide and uh, see for yourself uh, what you can do, configuring, networking, and installing various software. And who knows, you might end up uh, getting into it creating your own server and setting up your own um, little private cloud uh, with all the software you need. Um, virtualization, uh, again, I will send you to documentation or videos uh, where you can read more about it or learn more about it. But in a nutshell, it is simply emulating a computer. So virtualization has various layers or levels, but at the end of the day, what we want to do, we want to interact with the virtual computer. This virtual computer consists of virtual parts, virtual hard drive, virtual CPU, and so on. Um, I'm sure you've heard about it and you might know probably more than me about it. I just wanted to introduce it as very simply a virtual computer. So you have a virtual computer inside of your computer. And again, at the end of this video, you will learn how to set up a Docker running Docker uh, engine inside the VM and connect to it with your Docker CLI, Docker client from your host machine. So really brief about Incus. Um, Incus is one of the virtualization methods. As I mentioned, it's really efficient in resource management. You can go as small as running a Docker or OCI compliant um, Docker images. Um, or as big as running a fully fledged desktop VMs. And that's one thing that is really appealing uh, when using Incus. And that's why I chose it to create the series uh, on this platform. Uh, it has quite robust security features. It supports unprivileged containers and full network isolation. If this is something you're interested in from the security angle, that's definitely nice. And as of late, uh, Incus also has macOS support. So I use Linux. 
uh, by the way, not Arch, but Pop OS, but I use Linux, so it works on Linux out of the box. It supports um, all the Linux primitives like C groups and namespaces. However, with Colima, which is a quite interesting project, you can now install Incus also on macOS and obviously on Windows with uh, Windows subsystem for Linux, you can do this as well. So now Incus is cross-platform, so wherever you are, you should be able to install it and uh, follow along with the tutorial. So real quick, uh, how do we set up anything on Incus? Incus has both a command line and a UI. I'm going to show you today how to use command line, but you can equally well use a UI. It's quite easy to set up as well. So first we are launching a VM. In our case, this is going to be VM. As I mentioned, it could have been a container or so-called system container, but I am choosing VM fully fledged with the desktop option. So Incos has its own images repository, uh, which you can just search for and find Ubuntu or Mint or whatever other flavor of Linux you want, you can create your own images as well. So once we've launched a VM, I already have it on my machine, uh, we can check the status of the VM. So let's open a second team explain and type in course list. You can see here it's a little bit cluttered. So when I maximize the window, you can see I have two containers, one a system container, one a container app and a VM running. We have a Docker host running there. We have also Tailscale, which is quite interesting service for another video. And we have an IP for a VM that is assigned to it. So the VM is there. I'm going to show it to you quickly. Nothing crazy here. Uh, this is the VM. It's a typical Ubuntu installation. Uh, I didn't do anything uh, crazy here yet. Um, I've installed, of course, Docker, which I will show you how to do. But it's fairly simple virtual machine that I can quickly um, boot up using Incus and do whatever experimentation I want there or use it for whatever purposes. So that's how this looks. Let's switch back to, to the presentation. Close this. So we have created the VM with this command and other commands. You can set it up. You can configure the CPU limits, memory limits. I have it a little bit beefed up, so I gave it two CPUs, but gave it way more memory than two gigabytes. And finally, you can configure networking so you can access your VM from your local host. So this is the typical simple setup to get the VM going. And here on the top, you can see um, all the documentation about Incus that I highly encourage you to read. It's really well put together and a lot of dense info. So our task is to launch this environment and open a console. So this is what you just seen a moment ago. I have launched the console and you do this with the command Incus console Ubuntu and type VGA for graphics. And this results in a console that you've seen a moment ago. Task two, we want to install Docker. This is taken from Docker uh, web page. You simply have to copy paste all those commands inside of your um, virtual machine and Docker will be installed. I've already done this. The Docker is running in my case. And let's see, I can say Docker, let's say PS, and we have no containers running at this point, but we have Docker, uh, Docker ready here. All right, uh, it takes over my focus here. Okay. Now um, we've installed Docker. That's the first step. Second step, we have to connect to it. In order to connect to Docker remote instance, we have to do one of two things. If Docker has been installed with um, systemd, which is the case for Ubuntu, we can edit um, this Docker service file. And once we add the Docker service file, we essentially change this line, which um, originally is like this, and we append to it um, this IP address, which means for um, all the addresses, it, it, the machine will listen on all the uh, interfaces and 
for this port, it will forward the port uh, and I will be able to access it when I'm accessing the IP of my virtual machine. Then we reload the daemon and restart the service. So what this should do, it should give us the ability to access Docker um, service running on uh, my VM. And here we can see I've already done this, uh, but I'm going to see if I can check in the in history. So I am editing this file slightly differently using Vim. Uh, and you can see here is the line that we have changed um, as I showed in the presentation. There's also other options here that you can do. Another way of doing this is to modify the Docker config JSON file. Uh, but I think this was a little bit more interesting. All right. So one important point, if you use firewall, you need to make sure that you set the default forward policy to accept. I happen to use um, uncomplicated firewall on my Linux box, but you might be using something else. So your command might look different. Once we have this set up, the easiest way to access it, in my opinion, is to use dirn. If you don't know what dirn is, I've made a video about it. I'll link it in the description. I should see it somewhere on top. This is a way of loading environmental variables on directory entry and unloading them on exiting a directory. So let's actually see this in action. So here I'm going to change to Docker VM. And you can see it loaded a bunch of a bunch of uh, environmental variables, and it also loaded this DIP and DIP URL. So if you if I edit the DRENF file, which I have a shortcut for DRENF edit, let's uh, set the file type to bash, so we have a little bit syntax highlighting. So here I'm exporting a variable that essentially gives me the IP of my VM. So I'm executing uh, incus exec command on my Ubuntu virtual machine, and I'm executing hostname dash I, which gives me all the IP addresses of my host. And I'm just grabbing the first one, which is my IP. So I don't have to remember what kind of IP is it. And if it changes in the future, I will always have a fresh one. So now I am also exporting a helpful variable a URL, which we will see in action later. And finally, Important part, I need to export my Docker host environmental variable that is used by my Docker client to know where is my Docker host located so that I can connect to it. All right, with all this setup out of the way, if I go here, you can see that I have an Nginx container running, but this container is running on my VM. If I go out of this folder and type again DPSA, DPSA, by the way, is my alias for a little bit nicer docker ps command. So there's nothing crazy here. I'm just formatting it and outputting ID, name, and image. So we are outside of our folder now, and you can see dear env unloaded the variables. And now the docker host environmental variable is pointing to my local uh, instance of docker. So. If I do this, you see it's nothing. Docker host is empty, meaning this is pointing to my local instance, and I have different containers running here. If we go back to our Docker VM folder and now uh, read Docker host, you can see that this defaults to IP of my virtual machine and the port where Docker is running. Okay, so with all this out of the way, we have it set up in such a way that we have a dedicated folder that essentially connects to our VM anytime we enter it. So we can interact with our remote Docker host rather than with our local Docker host. So let's run an actual container. So we can do Docker run, and I'm just doing it completion from history. We are running a typical Docker welcome uh, container. So this is running now, and we can again confirm that indeed this Docker container is running. It had, had its default name generated. And now we can open it. So how do we open it? We can take advantage of the variables that we created. So open and this D so stands for Docker IP URL and port 8080. 
when we do this, uh, we should have a web page opening and now we are navigating to Docker and this is our first Docker um, container running remotely in our VM. All right, so let's close it. And that is how we tested it. So that was a real quick introduction to how to set up VM on Incas and how to set up Docker so that you can connect to it remotely. I will continue this series. Please let me know in the comments below what would you like to see next uh, for the home lab setup. We're going to do this for a while on a local machine using virtualization, um, such as Incos, specifically Incos. And then at some point we will move to, to a home lab. I am planning to do something about Kubernetes, maybe something about development environments and so on. Please let me know what are you interested in learning about and I'll be happy to uh, create a video about it. All right, so that's all for today. A quick introduction to Incas and uh, creating a remote Docker environment on a local virtual machine. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Um, Please uh, leave a like and subscribe if you like my content. Uh, tell a friend that helps the channel grow. Uh, and otherwise, uh, thanks for watching and see you in the next video.